Welcome to this podcast review for October 15th, 2024, and I'm J.D. Duran. And I'm Brennan Cassidy. Thanks for joining us, everybody, as on the, on this episode, we build Legos. That's what we're here fit. to do. The pieces we, fit. Yep, we, we have our own Lego sets, and we're going to build them as we have a conversation on oh, That piece sounds like so piece. much fun. I love I Legos. Know. We probably should should have thought about that ahead of time because i i would oh. love to do that <laughs> and i got a ton of them right out here oh, honestly right the room. with the whole video component of our podcast now that'd be a fun little exercise to do as we're talking about movies as opposed to just yeah. really overthinking how we want to articulate ourselves just hey, just sit here and play with legos and relax have a good time and just talk honestly it might yeah. turn out to be our best episode think, if we did think, that. i think that would be great yeah maybe yeah. that's what we do for our first live episode uh, for those that listened to our Saturday night conversation, we joked at the beginning of mm-hmm. that review by, you know, talking about should we ever do a live episode? Yeah. I think we should. I think that'd be a lot of fun, but we, you know, we haven't done one before. Maybe that's what we do. We just build Legos and talk about movies. Yeah. It'll be like mm-hmm. hot ones. Just instead of eating chicken wings, <laughs> he'll be playing with Legos. We, exactly. We build Legos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think we're sitting on a gold mine there. I think so. I think so. Um, all right. Well, we we are here to talk about piece by piece. This is the latest film from documentarian Morgan Neville, which some of you may know from films like 20 Feet from Stardom, mm-hmm. Won't You Be My Neighbor, among many others. Uh, but those are, are certainly two that people really know him by. Right. Um, and it's about the producer, American musician, Pharrell Williams. And of course, it makes sense why we bring up Legos because the whole film is animated in Lego. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I honestly did not know too much about this movie going in other than it was going to be about his life in some yeah. way. It was a biographical uh, animated version of his life. It premiered at Telluride. And, you know, it's been getting a lukewarm reaction, I would say. Yeah, yeah, which is unfortunate, especially given my curiosity for this film at the very least. I wouldn't call myself the biggest Pharrell Williams fan, uh, but I have a lot of respect for him as a producer, especially, especially given his history with the Neptunes, which this film does go into. But I'm always just simply interested in movies that fit into this like weird purgatory of sorts between documentary and fictional and some other variation of that, which this film is kind of all of that in a way it is Mm -hmm. a documentary, but it's also not, it's an animated film, but Mm -hmm. kind of not, it's not a narrative animated film, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but, but it, it has different components that certainly lend it's, it lends itself to being a very creative outing in the documentary lane. Yeah. Absolutely. And I am interested to get into, you know, that specifically with the film. Uh, But I also want to note in terms of the tepid responses to this film, this is quintessentially why Rotten Tomatoes can sometimes be a little misleading, right? Because I think currently Mm -hmm. it sits somewhere around 81%, something to that effect, 82%, which is pretty good. However, on Metacritic, it's around 60. Yeah. And those two numbers are quite distinctive there, right? Like that's quite a gap between the two, Uh, which is to say like, you know, when you're talking about an aggregator, um, like Mm -hmm. everyone can give your film a C plus or a B minus. And And it can get 100%, right? It it collectively adds up to 100%. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's that's why you sometimes have to look at the, like, like the average rating score that sometimes comes underneath that percentage in very small print. And a lot of times it could sometimes sway a little bit closer to that meta score. Uh, Not always, but it might, it might 
fall a little more in line with that. Um, but of course, you got that giant percentage that is what sells the movie in many ways. Um, yeah. So yeah, so people who go by Rotten Tomatoes scores solely will see this as oh, this is a this is a B movie, like a B graded movie. Um, and maybe not all critics feel that way. Yeah. No, yeah, it's it's real interesting how the aggregators can work sometimes. Uh, it is what it is. I'm not against mm-hmm. Rotten Tomatoes. We are on Rotten Tomatoes. I think it is yeah. a great resource for a lot of people, but it is why often I feel like Metacritic is perhaps the best of the aggregators, though it typically gives you a more accurate reading on what the critics are saying yeah. about a movie. Um, anyway, I just found that interesting. Um, but I do think, that, yes, when it comes to this documentary, there's certainly some aspects to talk about that. You know, I'm, I'm really compelled to see where this goes. So with all of that said, let's go ahead and jump into this. Um, as I noted, this is directed by Morgan Neville. It is about mm-hmm. Pharrell. So, you know, it's it's really just him and a bunch of others uh, that surround his life, real life musicians, artists mm-hmm. that he worked with that come and go throughout the film. Um, if you're not familiar with it, it is a vibrant journey through the life of Pharrell Williams, told through the lens of Lego a- animation, which we've already done. We set up the synopsis without having read it verbatim. <laughs> but now that I have, we've been redundant. Just in case you didn't catch that earlier, we'll say the synopsis Just, maybe three times so it actually sticks. Exactly. Which is hilarious because often I will write down the synopsis here and I don't really read it until we get into it, such as yeah. what we just did. So it is kind of funny how that worked out. Um, all right, just Brennan, goes to what, show how simple the movie is. What did you think about piece <laughs> by piece? You know, like I said earlier, I'm not really the biggest fan of Pharrell Williams, but I do really respect him as a producer, a beat maker, someone that just had a really good ear for for hooks, for pop music especially. Uh, mm-hmm. The fusion of pop and hip-hop and how that really affected many artists at that time. Uh, most people may not know for well, Pharrell Williams is tied to, you know, hit songs like Snoop Dogg's Drop It Like It's Hot or the influence of No Doubt maybe going a bit more dance rock on their Rock Steady album. That was a yeah. huge influence from Pharrell, Pharrell Williams. And most people might not know that. And I love that we have a film that's at least attempting to tap into that creative mind in a creative way. And Morgan Neville is a very creative documentarian. We've seen that before. Uh, 20 Feet from Stardom is probably my favorite. I think that's a very effective documentary. Uh, And I was really hoping that this was a film that could tap into something really creative in that way, especially given Pharrell's, uh, his goal with this movie. And he said up front that he, you know, what if we could take, what, what if we can visualize my life through Legos? How can we capitalize on that imagination in this way? And the final product is really just utilizing Legos to do a basic Talking Heads documentary. Uh, mm-hmm. That it, That's really what it feels like. And I found it to be, to I, I, this, I don't know if this is too hyperbolic to say, but this is probably the biggest disappointment of the year for me. Uh, it mm-hmm. really didn't work for me that much. Um, and it's because of that potential that feels kind of squandered. I think it's a very intri- intriguing idea uh, to utilize some type of animated quality to capture the vibrancy of a music artist, especially yet somehow the choice to use Legos, I actually think severely hinders this experience at times. It does very much work, but the util- like, like the fact that most of this is basically just talking Lego heads <laughs> more than anything else. And the idea of having this type of animation to capture the musical experience and the creation of music as a musician myself, I found that kind of stifling. Like, I feel like it almost kind of masks the importance of Pharrell as a musician because I don't really feel like it's getting into the musicality as much as perhaps a real documentary or even a biopic would. Uh, so I feel like it's it, those ingredients just don't feel like they're matching all that well. And I really just think it's a, it's, it's a simple thing of Morgan Neville not really knowing how to take full advantage of this idea to tell this story in a compelling way, even though I do think there are sequences and some moments of great visualization where it does come together. I think the the one scene that really does work is the performance of no doubts, hella good and how you have mm-hmm. that split in the, th- this crater that literally divides two separate 
factions of music fans that are able to come together and how it visualizes that yeah, I think sure. is really good. And we do get a few moments like that, but I think mm -hmm. they're pretty few and far between in a movie that feels like I said, it feels like it's just using Legos to do a basic talking heads documentary. And I found that really mm -hmm. unfortunate. Yeah. There is a striking yet stifling polarity at the center of this film. Mm -hmm. When you look at Pharrell Williams and uh, someone who has this reputation for being creative and intuitive as a producer, especially mm -hmm. how can this film complement that ethos Making a documentary that is Lego is a great way to distinct itself from other documentaries, especially when it would be very challenging to articulate his vision and passion for music otherwise with how he sure. articulates the power and imaginative spirit of music using Legos and their color palette as a way to visually bring that to life is really smart. And a lot of the time, I do think that is wonderful here. Um, I did, I very much did enjoy many of those visual sequences here. I, I think that is effective mm. and complementary. On the other side of that coin, however, from a storytelling point of view, it is very paint by numbers. Yeah. It is rags to riches. It is, I've reached the mountaintop and have become arrogant, and that becomes my downfall. And now I have to learn to embrace my roots once again in order to overcome my own mistakes. It's a story we've heard a thousand times before, and it is disappointing with how deeply derivative it is in that regard. It is so counterintuitive to the animation uh, in terms of, of mimicking the unique and clever personality of Pharrell. That tug of war, I did find... Uh, extremely troublesome to this film in terms of being mm -hmm. engaged and making it compelling. Um, again, I do like how vibrant the animation is. I like how playful it is. The example you bring up is really great. I think there's a lot of great examples, you know, when he's mm -hmm. getting into happy and how that ends up moving him. I think is really great. And that is yeah. another proponent of the film. I do appreciate is the emotional sincerity underneath its vibrancy. It might be dry and paint by numbers from a storytelling perspective, but the emotion is sincere and heartfelt. And, and that moment in particular, I do think is quite moving to see him react to, you know, how people embrace that song and how it is, uh, again, reverberated in the animation, I do think is clever. Yeah. Uh, the, the, there's a lot of clever antics to the animation that, again, kind of taps into that that spiritual imagination that comes with music. I just wish that there was more to the actual story beyond talking heads, beyond a very conventional story. Um, yeah, it, it, that that to me is where I I really struggled to engage with the film. Yeah, and and it's it's not like we're asking for Pharrell himself to have a better story or a more interesting yeah. life. It's it's because, not his life story. Yeah. To be clear, to what I'm talking about. Yeah, uh, like he like his story is his story, and yeah. he can't. And he's truly passionate that. about that. He has he has <laughs> conviction that he wants his story to be yeah. told. Um, it's just you know the fact of the matter is. Much of his story, his real life story, is something we may have heard other people go through. Yeah. So, of course, they want to try and find a new way to tackle it that's able to separate itself from the other rags to riches yeah. story that it could become uh, intertwined with. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the, yeah. Yeah. The film doesn't choose a lane or emphasize or focus on a specificity to distinct itself from those other stories. That's where it gets derivative. It plays out like, a traditional biopic in terms of that rags to riches, the mountaintop, the downfall. Yeah. It, like it just, it hits every single beat instead of doing something that is creative, that is intuitive, Which, that again yeah. is the ethos of Pharrell as a producer and artist, instead of finding that Avenue to do something unique and creative, it just kind of leans into the tropes. Yeah. It's, is what which, I'm trying to say, which and I, and I agree with you there, which is why. And while I 
sort of praised the fact that this movie is utilizing something creative like Legos to tell this story. At the same time, I do wonder if Legos were the right choice here. I don't know if they were. Because given Pharrell's story and the fact that it's being told in a way that is pretty rudimentary, sometimes in order to save the film, you need an actual component to it. Like you need a real life component to actually sell the drama a little bit more, which is why I actually think what would have made this movie work better is if we actually got the chance to see Pharrell himself. Uh, but we don't. We like there, There's no live action component to this movie whatsoever. And I think in a way that does hurt the movie because I think it masks the potential emotionality that it is going for, you know, like, like the, the, the sincerity there. It's kind of like a movie, like a bad comparison because it's not a documentary, but I think of something like Rocket Man, which was a very rudimentary story. It still kind of had that Wikipedia structure, but the fact that there was like a performative nature to it, I think actually allowed the drama to sing more loudly. Uh, and some, th I felt something kind of stifling here by utilizing something that is kind of expressionless mm. in a way. Uh, and and I, I just, I wonder if maybe that was the right approach, uh, just given the, the direction that the story is going and if it, and by not taking advantage of it enough, if there was maybe a different creative avenue that the film could have taken outside of the Lego property specifically. I don't know. And I, I, I wonder mm. if it would have been more effective for me had we actually seen Pharrell himself, at least throughout some of it. You know, I don't, I don't, and I, I did think about that a yeah. little bit. Interesting. That's where you and I might differ quite a bit okay. here. It's hard to say without seeing it in execution and how yeah, effective yeah. that would have been. But on its face, I don't know if that would have been complimentary to this film for a couple of reasons. One, I do think the vibrancy and the creativity of the animation is pretty well rendered. Mm -hmm. And I think that emotion does come through regardless. That moment near the okay. end is I'm talking about where he is genuinely moved by how everyone galvanized around him and lifted him up when he was at his lowest, how that invoked a new sense of creativity in him. And it gave him this new perspective on life. I felt that regardless of whether we had a live action component to it or not, I think that comes through in the way he speaks to the camera. Again, I think the Lego animation as limited as it is, I still think it taps into that emotion certainly well enough. And the other reason I don't mm -hmm. think I needed that here because this film was already too derivative from a storytelling perspective is you bring in a live action component there and you very dangerously close to the Lego movie in that regard with how that film utilizes emotion in a very similar sure. manner. Sure. So I don't know if that would have worked for me here. Um, I think the, like I had no problem with the film and the emotion that it was aiming for, especially near the end when he has these life lessons uh, that was not a problem for me as much as it was mm. getting to that moment. I do think is quite dull and a little sluggish. Um, and, and again, it's just tepid because it's hitting very familiar beats without doing anything creative to make, uh, to make them insightful in any sort of way. The animation and the Lego aspect was the only thing that saves this film for me. The only thing yeah, that makes yeah, it okay. unique and interesting. I mean, it makes it unique and interesting for sure. I just wonder if it was the right kind of unique and interesting approach that would have worked for me, especially given the musicality of it, because this is, again, maybe where the musician side of me comes out and admittedly makes me a bit biased when it comes to a movie like this. Uh, because when we see the creative process, the musical creative process specifically, there's something about that that I would really like to see that Legos just can't tap into. Uh, like, like almost like the mathematics of musical creation that I'm just not seeing given the act, given the fact that we're actually seeing this through a very visual specific way. Uh, and, and, and I, and, and that's maybe another side of a, a, another side of where the idea of utilizing Legos doesn't fully mm. work for me. Um, well, and, uh, and I think what's interesting about that, because obviously of the two of us, I'm not the musician. So perhaps mm -hmm. that's part of the duality here. Mm -hmm. However, as I noted in my opening thoughts, the way Pharrell himself articulates his passion for music 
and again, specifically the imaginative spirit of it that he himself sees when he is in engaging in the music himself. I don't know how you articulate that without the use of animation, but you don't necessarily have to use Legos, I guess, but the idea of animation itself, I do think is a wonderful tool given how Pharrell specifically articulates the power of animation, the power of imagination and how that invokes something in him in terms of his own identity. Uh, I, to me, that's yeah, where the I, animation I, I, here, I, I think is I th really I think great. animation. Animation absolutely can do that. I'm not sure if Lego animation is the right way to do that. Okay. The, the, the time that it really did work for me is that example I mentioned earlier when no doubt is performing their song hella good. And that's yeah, because yeah. it's more about the producer's mindset and the, you know, the genre bending mindset, as opposed to how we view Pharrell getting together with Chad Hugo right away and forming the Neptunes and how their musicality is actually really good that it's able to convince yeah. people that they have something special. Admittedly, I had a hard time believing it based on the uh, execution that we were seeing on screen. I felt like there was a component okay. missing. I felt like I was just simply being told and we had Legos playing it for us. Uh, and and I was just not quite gotcha. there, even though I, I, I do trust that Pharrell was that influential person at that time. Like, I believe mm -hmm. that that is true. The film didn't tell me that, though. And I think it was trying to tell me that. I just didn't quite feel convinced gotcha. based on what we were seeing on screen. Okay, yeah, I did not have an issue with the Lego animation in that regard. Okay. I was able to keep up with, buy into his story. The animation I thought was very complimentary to it. And maybe it's because I found the storytelling so prosaic and mm -hmm. fabricated, not fabricated, but just uh, blunt, I guess, in terms of here are the facts. Yeah. Like it's well, very that's Wikipedia kind of the talking -like. heads aspect of it. It's too. the talking I, I, heads. Yeah. 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 And, one thing. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I, I was just going to, I guess, reiterate. Like I just, I found all of that so uh, like trudging here that I was on the verge of feeling I hate to use the word bored, but it, a lot of this film felt pretty dull from that angle. But the animation sure. was the only thing that kept me going. And 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 I enjoyed the the Lego aspect of it. And at times it gets really creative and intuitive. And and I mm -hmm. very much did appreciate that, especially when he's tapping into some of these musical elements of it. Maybe in the in-between at times, the animation can again maybe feel a little um a little tepid but i yeah. i didn't mind that as i i still didn't mind that as much i guess if we're going to have a talking head i prefer a lego talking head to a real talking head <laughs> maybe that's it i don't know yeah <laughs> like, i guess it, it, yeah i don't know I, I, there, but there are moments when i can tell pharrell himself is feeling genuinely moved about his life and he wants to convey that and that's something I don't think a Lego head can quite convey as yeah. opposed to a real life head. And you know I, I mean? and again, that's, I was moved. I was, you were okay. Like, See, I, I, I was, was not. Yeah. Again, to reiterate that again, I was fully, fully moved by those moments in this film, particularly at the end when he talks about the galvanization of the people around him, well, as I, I noted earlier, like all I, of that, I yeah. still found moving. I did I, not I, need well, a, I did not need a real life person to convince me. I did need I did need more real life people to convince me, but I will also say the moment towards the end about why he chose to write the song "Happy." That's another example where I did feel the proper synergy between the Lego animation and the storytelling. I do think that's another another example where it does work, and I guess I'm kind of the litmus test on that because I will admit that song "Happy" is one I just as a song I don't love it. I think it's okay. Um, but this movie did make me appreciate it more given where the writing of that song ultimately came from and his reasons for it uh, mm -hmm. and how there was this coming together. I mean, admittedly, it is kind of funny watching people from all over the world from different countries play and dance to the song. Mm -hmm. And we have to believe where they're from simply because of the name on screen, like Nicaragua and stuff. But it's still Legos doing it. So it's sometimes kind of hard to actually visualize where it's from. I just thought that was kind of funny. But I do think that is the other moment here where there is a great synergy uh, between 
the Lego animation and Pharrell's conviction and the overall storytelling. Mm-hmm. Like that that's the time where I did feel like, okay, everything's coming together to make me believe this. Uh, yeah. And it does end on a high enough note that uh, it, it almost did convince me that the movie worked, but there are too many moments in totality that I kept re I, I felt like I was really reaching for something it was trying to go for. And yeah. I just wasn't quite getting there. Um, but that's another moment towards the end where I do think it does get there. Yeah. I love that movie. I think it's great. Again, I have almost no issue with the animation whatsoever, even the talking mm-hmm. heads element of it again, maybe because again, of how unique that is comparatively to a real life person doing another talking head interview which has been done since the beginning of time. And that can be interesting. Don't get me wrong. That's not necessarily the be all end all of criticisms. I mean, when it comes Morgan to Neville has done it in a very interesting way before. Yeah, too. absolutely. Morgan yeah. Neville has done that very well in the past. So I don't necessarily have an issue with it. It all comes down to execution as is the case with everything. Yeah. But there is something about watching that here, a tactic that is, as old as time when it comes to film and documentaries, we've never seen it done in that specific way before. So I did find it compelling when a Snoop Dogg comes onto the screen in a talking head format. And I still found myself entertained as if I was watching Snoop Dogg in real life. And I especially Mm -hmm. love again, the little clever things they do like the whole PG fog I will say, I yeah, yeah there, nice there are joke. little jokes. I wish there were more of them, but there are little jokes that are genuinely funny. The PG spray yeah. is one of them. Yeah, yeah, like I loved that. So like I had no issue with the animation. Again, the animation is the only thing that in a different scenario, obviously I would have stayed till the end because we were reviewing it here on the show. Mm-hmm. But it it is the only thing that got me to the end. If we were not reviewing it, I don't know if I would have stayed till the end. Like that's how banal I think the storytelling is. It's, yeah. well, it's not all that interesting. It's not, yeah. you can go and read everything about this film on Wikipedia. You oh, can you go absolutely and read about can. It. It, it very much is. We that, learn nothing. Um, There's yeah. very little insight here, but the animation does bring an element that kept me engaged, that kept me laughing, that kept me emotionally in it um, and everything in between. So I cannot speak enough to, and we've seen Lego movies before, so it's not as if this film is new and different in that regard, but with this specific context and this story and, and Pharrell, and I'm with you, like when it comes to Pharrell, I'm not the biggest Pharrell fan. Like happy Mm -hmm. is a good song. I like it. I'm not going to claim it as a film that I, or a song that I champion. It's not one that I love. I wouldn't mm-hmm. say that about any of his songs. Yeah. Um, I Most mean, of the stuff producer, I love. The, yeah. As a producer, I love what he what he contributed because I think he has a great ear for hooks and melody and really pop music. I think he knows how to craft a hit. Um, yeah. And, and, yeah, and again, yeah. even in that, it's kind of hit or miss for me. Now, I guess to mm-hmm. be fair, to be fair, I am generally not someone that listens to pop music. That's simply not who I am. It's not my music yeah. palette. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't say that to be pretentious, although it might sound that way, but I mean, you're, yeah, I, you're busy listening to film scores. That's all you're listening yeah, I'm to. listening to Hans Zimmer, which yeah. it was as populous from a film scoring perspective, I guess. Sure, but, sure. Um, I don't really listen to pop music. And so a lot of the songs that they bring up here as being huge hits for Pharrell, mm, like take it like the Snoop Dogg one that you talked about earlier. I don't love mm-hmm. that song. And, and you know, and Snoop it, yeah. talks about how that <laughs> that was my only number one hit or my first number one hit or whatever he says mm-hmm. there in the moment. I don't like that song. I don't. Um, you know, and there's and there's <laughs> others like they bring up, but it's like like, <laughs> like like the Pusha T song that he talks about. You know, when he brings him back out of the streets as yeah. being this big hit. Yeah, which I was, don't even know if yeah. I've ever heard of it. You know, like I like I don't I don't like it didn't move me. So like. Yeah. I, I understand he becomes a big part of the or, or like the song he has with Jay Z. That's another one. Don't mm-hmm. care for it. What do you like, think of the <laughs> what, what do you what do you think of his guest appearances on Daft Punk songs like Get Lucky? Yeah, like the or, Daft Punk one is the the one I I easily like the most. Okay, that one I really like, um, and maybe it's because it's Daft Punk and I really like them. A I, lot. I, yeah, I think that, that one the, there was definitely more of a partnership between Pharrell and Daft Punk, yeah. and even. Uh, 
uh, Nile Rodgers from Chic, who's playing guitar on it too. Yeah. So there's there, there, there's definitely more of a band effort happening there. Sure. That's actually the other thing is I, I when Pharrell is writing his own music as an artist, I tend to like him more when he's working with other people. Like let's say when he's working with the Neptune specifically as a producing group, or when he was working with Nerd, and they were making some of these like some of these fusions of alternative rock with hip hop. I actually thought mm-hmm. there were some pretty interesting things there too, but I, I think he, he it, it, I, I think this is something I would have liked to see more of as him as this producer. But I also like the idea of him talking about not really feeling comfortable being a pop artist, being up yeah. front and center, which this does talk about. Um, mm-hmm. Again, I, I kind of wish that the animation maybe, Vi- took advantage of that more and visualized it a little bit more um mm-hmm. but i think it's a, i think that's a worthy idea as to why we see him more as someone behind the scenes as opposed to hogging the spotlight uh, yeah. cuz he he never really had many hits he doesn't release many songs yeah and i again that's an element where i wish the film went into that more it it is brought up here it's a brief talking point but i don't mm-hmm. think it's all that insightful in the end i don't think I don't think Morgan it, Neville. It, it doesn't go beyond that. that but y- y- yeah, y- I like the idea that it's here. I think that's a worthy sure. talking point, especially sure, for a I musician agree. like yeah. Pharrell. Um, but yeah, you're no, right. I it's, agree. It's it's, it's kind of limited yeah. as far as the the thematic density of it. it. It is because again, this is a documentary that wants to focus on. Well, I grew up in Virginia, and I didn't have mm-hmm. much of an opportunity. Then this yeah. record label comes a- along, and. I end up winning a contest. I get to be a part of it. And I, I love my grandma. She kind of pushed me. And then I ended up getting uh, hooked up with this, uh, I forget the guy's name, the the, the manager character. Oh, yeah, Terry something. Terry. I, I think it was I with get, Virgin Records, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Then I get involved with Jay-Z. And then, you know, then comes Gwen Stefani. And then comes Snoop Dogg and Pusha T and all of these artists. And then, you know, I... I you know, I get to let my ego get the best of me and uh, I fall out for like five years and hit rock bottom. And then everyone, you know, gal- like it's just like everything is so predictable. <laughs> like and, and, well, and the film wants to focus on the the Wikipedia part of it and not the human part of it. Well, and that's uh, the unfor- which I found it kind of insufferable here. I, I, that's honest. the unfortunate thing, it, it, because at first I was thinking to myself, is Pharrell's story even interesting enough for this kind of movie and honestly i think it's the perfect kind of story for this kind of movie because it's ripe for that type of creative license and Mm. that's where it just feels like there is no like if anything i think the biggest issue if i had to pinpoint any one person that might be the biggest culprit here i think it is more of a a morgan neville problem than anything else uh like i i I just I, i i just i don't know if there was it almost felt like Pharrell's vision and Morgan Neville's attempts to capitalizing on that vision just didn't feel like they were in lockstep. I just, I don't well, know if he was quite like, if he quite understood the assignment, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. Like, I, given Morgan Neville's work in the past, and mm-hmm. I, you know, not that everything he's done has been great, but when he's at his best, he's really fantastic. 20 Feet yeah. from Stardom, I agree with you, is really great. I think you can make an argument. His best film is Best of Enemies in 2015. That that's another good one. Freaking rules. That is a great film. That is honestly one of the best movies of that year period, regardless of the kind of movie you're talking about. Won't sure. you be my neighbor? I know got the more Oscar love or more awards love at the very least, and I do really like that documentary. I would go to bat for that film. Um, and that in that same year. Oh yeah, I know you're. They'll going love with me this. when I'm yeah. dead. Is yeah. incredible. It is yeah. very, very good. I love yeah. that. Uh, maybe even more so than Once You Be My Neighbor. And I think those came out the same year. So they did. Uh, yeah. like, when he's at his best, he is very good. This feels like Morgan Neville, director for hire, because he is also on screen as a Lego. And there are times where he seems lost on camera. As a director, asking well, it just, questions. It, it seems like he's asking the wrong type of questions, honestly. <laughs> like, I don't know if he knows what to do here because it feels like a Pharrell project. This is something mm-hmm. he wants to do. He wants to do it on Legos. Um, and so everything is done on his terms. Morgan Neville is just someone that can bring it to life because he makes documentaries for a living. 
and has been successful in the past, but mm-hmm. it, he's certainly never, to my knowledge anyway, he's never done animation before. So this is him working in a realm that is new to him, working with Pharrell, who's really in charge of this project, and him mm-hmm. just not knowing where to take it. I mean, he literally asked Pharrell at the end, like, how are we ending this movie? Like, he has no idea. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I, I, It almost seems disingenuous to say Morgan Neville directed this movie. It uh, kind of does. Like, that's yeah. how I felt. Like, you know, because I did not walk out loving this film. Um, you know, I, I enjoyed it enough, I guess, because of the animation. I think there's some fun. I enjoyed the, emo- the emotion of it, as mm-hmm. I talked about. I, I, I don't love it. I, I think it's successful enough. It's fine. To me, this is the epitome of fine. Like, the 60 on Metacritic is, like, I would say that's pretty accurate. Um, yeah, yeah. Even, uh, like, even, even, even though even it if seems I'm like... more like 50. Yeah, yeah, well, I was just going to say, even though it sounds like you might be higher on the film than I am, I think, like, if, if I had to grade this film, if I were writing a review for it that then got submitted to Metacritic and they needed some type of score to tie it to, I would say, like, around 50 is where I would give this. This is yeah, like that, that that's two, where I'm at. Yeah, this that's is like that two yeah. and a half out of five on Letterboxd for me. Yeah, yeah, I'm... I'm right there with you, you know, because I think the animation is great. It saves this film in so many ways. Like I said, I, I don't know if I would have finished it without it. And Mm -hmm. who's to say though, if the live action component was really good, I mean, maybe it would have been around the same grade, but I mean, ultimately that's where I'm at. Cause I think the storytelling is so banal, but the animation, I really did have a lot of fun with. I think it does flourish here. I think it's, it is creative. It is intuitive. Yep. Um, and I also but do yeah, want to say yeah. the epitome of being like right down the middle. I'm, yeah. I'm and, very mixed on it. Yeah. And I do want to say, even though it sounds like I was kind of critical of the animation here, and in a way I am, it's more so the the animation being Lego animation specifically. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I am fully on board with documentaries utilizing animation more often. Uh, I actually think that's a really creative and cool tactic for documentaries going forward. Uh, And we've seen a few examples where documentaries have incorporated animation into their films, and it's been very effective. One of my favorite examples is the Kurt Cobain uh, uh, film montage Mm -hmm. of Heck from Brent Morgan. There are a Mm -hmm. few sequences there, a few flashback sequences there that utilize animation, and it's haunting. It's really effective there. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it could be a really creative tactic in documentaries. And, that's why I wanted this film yeah, to Tower, work so well. Love yeah, Tower. Oh, Tower is yeah. another great example. That's yeah. oh, that's oh, yeah, that's a perfect example, I think, as to one that utilizes it very well. And that's why I was really rooting mm-hmm. for this film, and why I'm sad to mm-hmm. admit it didn't really work for me. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you. I am saddened that I'm 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 mixed on it, and yeah, I I just wish that there was more of a heft in terms of the storytelling and making yeah. it unique and creative. And maybe focusing on something specific. I know this isn't yeah. a drama. It is a documentary. So perhaps there was always going to be something more of a, a broadness to it. But, you know, mm-hmm. I, I think of something like that Miles Davis movie from like 2016. Oh, the, the Don, Don Cheadle, Cheadle film? film? Yeah, Miles yeah, Ahead. Which, well, Miles Ahead, yeah, yeah. Like I thought that was a really great film, maybe stumbles here and there, but I thought it was really good, especially because Mm -hmm. it, it emphasizes a very specific time in his life. And again, he wasn't making music. (laughs) Yeah. Like, like I, I don't, (laughs) but you know, I guess to that point, like what if this documentary was about that period where he was struggling and, Mm -hmm. and him trying to crawl his way back to like finding himself again. Yeah. Um, you know, instead of talking about everything, we focus on something. And mm-hmm. again, and, and again, I know it's a documentary and it's not going to, it doesn't have to be as specific. And I didn't expect this film to be that specific, but, but that's the thing. I just yeah, wonder it's... if there's a different way to tell this story than just regurgitating familiar trite tropes that honestly aren't, aren't, aren't that interesting like well and, and yeah. again nothing against pharrell but i mean i i'm not necessarily interested in watching uh a celebrity with tons of money get to the mountaintop and you know make a bunch of mistakes and lose them like okay and, i mean and, yeah I and i realize i realize a, a, doc, I a documentary is not the same as a biopic where a biopic is maybe something that should be focusing on that sliver 
of someone's life as opposed to their life yeah. in totality. Uh, a documentary sometimes has more of a more of an obligation to tell the full story if it needs to. Um, but there are many moments here in piece by piece where I started to forget that this was a documentary and I thought it was something like a Bohemian Rhapsody. Like, like it just like it, it almost it's a little bit of that from a storytelling kind of, perspective. It, it kind it of feels feel a little way. scripted in, what, yeah, in, in a yeah. way. Yeah. And no, that's I not agree. What you want. Yeah, I, I agree. From a storytelling perspective, it does feel very Bohemian Rhapsody. Like, and it, yeah. I guess maybe what I'm trying to say is because it is a documentary, it's not the same thing. Mm -hmm. So if it is going to be a documentary and again, maybe I'm arguing that it should have been a slice of life drama like a miles ahead instead yeah. of a documentary. But if it is going to be a documentary, I, I guess what I'm trying to argue for is the humanity. Where is the humanity? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we get a little bit of that at the end, as we talked about earlier, when he sees that montage of everyone coming together from around the globe, reacting to happy. I, I genuinely found that moving. I thought that was a really great use of animation. And I think mm -hmm. the, the emotion comes through for me there. Yeah. So um, like that, that element was great, but um, outside of that moment, there's really not a whole lot here where I feel like we get to connect with Pharrell Williams, the human being. Yeah. Um, I'm it, with you at times it's there at, in t at times, yeah. but yeah, the large majority of it, especially when he's going through the music industry, I felt so disassociated from the film. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. So, I wanted to love it more. I really did. Yeah. Um, so I guess with that said, if you agree or disagree with anything we had to say here, you can leave a comment below if you're watching on YouTube or you can reach out to us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, you can always email us on sessionfilm at gmail.com. Um, we have a review out of Saturday night. According to the box office, not many of you have seen it. Please go see that film. It's a good uh, movie. Go check out our conversation. We were joined by Brian Sudfield. It was a really great time. Uh, you can listen to that. Episode 606 is available right now. We talk about our top mm -hmm. 10 horror films of all time. And spoiler alert, Brendan had the Babadook at number one. It was you know, very surprising. I got to rewatch <laughs> that film. Because I loved Jennifer Kent's follow-up to that movie, The Nightingale, yeah. uh, and I think Nightingale she's a great filmmaker. Yeah. yeah, I gotta watch yeah. The Babadook again. Yeah, because that did it. not work for me the first time around. I know. Yeah. yeah, I love it. I know that's a film that you and I obviously disagree on, which is why yeah. I, that's the film. Yeah, I focus, yeah. But... <laughs> I, I I need to watch it again. Maybe maybe I might come at it with a. I, I had a very different attitude towards horror when I first saw that film. Sure. Uh, so maybe things have changed since I've. Maybe I came yeah, of I'd age. Be maybe I came of age. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah. Uh, I really like that film. And at any rate, all joking aside, we do talk <laughs> about our top 10 horror films of all time in episode 606. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about uh, Joker Fully Ado's continued fallout at the box office and so much more. Uh, go and check that out. More like more like falling a deuce. Falling, falling a deuce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um... Yeah, so this next week, honestly, I don't know what we're going to be talking about this next weekend. I know Smile 2 is one of the major releases. I have yet to see the first Smile, so I don't know mm, okay. if that's something we're doing. Anora is getting a slow trickle out. Perhaps that's something we can get into. Um, you know, I, I, we I, live I in time this. is coming, so uh, I, yeah. maybe that's when we can do too. And you'll finally oh, talk well, about that carousel horse. Uh, Woman of the Hour comes out on Netflix. I think oh, that that'd be a good one, one that we can do. That'd be a good one. Yeah. I, you know, I was also going to say, and maybe I should have brought this up on our review of Saturday Night, because Dylan O'Brien was heavily featured in Saturday Night. Of course, he plays Dan Aykroyd. He's really great. He was my favorite performance. Oh yeah, there's a film on Max that he's in, isn't it? He, ha yeah, there's a new film on Max that he is in. I'm not sure how you say it. Like, is it Cotto Cato? Lake or something? Cato Cato Lake? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm not exactly sure. They say it in the film, and I still don't know. Like, I wasn't paying attention, I guess. But mm -hmm. at, at any rate, he's one of the stars of that film. I did see it. He's also really great in that film. Like, he just he had a great weekend last weekend. So All right. that's certainly on the table as well. Yeah, he, I like that he's coming we'll back. We'll talk about it. Um, at any rate, with all of that said, thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on the Incession Film Podcast. I still like that one. I'm happy.